Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth. We do receive it written in our heart and mind. We thank you for the revelation of it. We will be hearers and doers of it and see the fruit of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. We've been sharing messages on the subject of the Holy Spirit. We've talked about the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. We talked about praying in tongues. We talked about how the Holy Spirit works from the Old Testament scriptures, from New Testament scriptures. We talked about how to be led by the Holy Spirit. And we talked about conditions that are necessary to see that happen, as well as conquering hindrances that would hinder us from being led by the Holy Spirit. Tonight, we're going to talk about the subject of hearing and obeying the voice of the Lord. Very important. We need to hear the voice of the Lord, obey, so God can accomplish what he purposes. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God, who at sundry times in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. That shows you how he's speaking to us now. He's speaking to us in the last days by his Son. Jesus Christ, and who, he, who is he? He's the Word. As we get the Word in us, <clears throat> we're hearing him speak to us. He speaks to us through the Word of God. We also know that the Holy Spirit has now been sent on the day of Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit being sent after we're born again, then we receive the Holy Spirit who comes to dwell in us. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I have said unto you. This shows you the fact that the Holy Spirit, who now it says the Father will send in my name, he's come to dwell in you and he's going to teach you and he's also going to bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I have said unto you. And we see also that what the Holy Spirit will do in John chapter 16, verse 13, Howbeit he, when the Spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall sh will show you things to come. That tells you something. He relays things that are coming to him from above. How does God speak to us in the last days? Through the Son. How does he do it? Through the Word, and also through the Holy Spirit, who relays the things that he hears from Jesus above and brings them unto us. One thing for sure, everything will be in line with the Word of God. If it's not in line with the Word of God, it's not coming from the Holy Spirit whatsoever. And that is important to check that out. Now, if we're going to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, there are conditions that need to be met. And then, of course, we're to obey it. In John chapter 10, Verse 3, it says, To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. That tells you something. It's the sheep that hear his voice. A sheep is one who follows the shepherd closely, right on their heels, as opposed to a goat who just wanders off and does whatever he wants. As you are close to the Lord, you're going to hear his voice. The closer you are in your walk with him, the more you'll be in the position to hear the voice of the Lord. And notice he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them. The sheep follow him for they know his voice because they're walking closely following after him. So being a sheep is absolutely essential if you are going to be able to hear the voice of the Lord. Many people don't hear the voice of the Lord because they're not walking that close to the Lord. If you're not walking close to the Lord, are you going to hear His voice? No. As you, the closer you're walking, the more you're going to be in the position to hear His voice. Another thing that's important to be able to hear the voice of the Lord, John 18, in verse 37, this is when Pilate was speaking to Jesus. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king? Then Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. And then he makes quite a statement. 
Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. This means if you're a person of the truth, you will be able to hear the voice of the Lord. The Word of God is the truth. If you're a person of the Word, if you're a person who seeks after the truth and follows after the Word of God, that is one that's going to hear His voice. The more the Word is in you, the more that you're going to hear His voice. The more that you are seeking after the truth in the Word, spending time in it, then that shows you're seeking after Him and you are going to hear the voice of the Lord. Another thing that's important for you to hear the voice of the Lord, 1 Samuel chapter 2, over in verse 18. It says, Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child girded with a linen ephod. The linen ephod was the priestly garment for those who were sanctified and righteous before him. Notice, Samuel ministered before the Lord. That's what God wants. He wants you to minister before Him, which means you're going to praise and worship Him. As you minister to Him, He's going to minister back unto you. And what happened is He did this. He grew before the Lord, and then He began to hear the voice of the Lord when He got to the place. Here we see that as He grew on, got in favor with the Lord because He continued in ministering to Him and doing the things that He wanted Him to do. And we come here, we see in the fact that when we get over here to in chapter 3, here's where Samuel ministered of the Lord before Eli. The word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, his eyes began to wax dim and he could not see. So here Samuel had laid down to sleep after he'd been ministered to him. And the Lord called to Samuel, and he said, Here am I. Now why was Samuel then hearing his voice? Because he was ministering unto him. When you're ministering unto the Lord, it's going to bring a filling of the Holy Spirit in you. You minister to him, he's going to minister back to you. And so he began to hear the voice of the Lord. He didn't understand it, and he thought that Eli was speaking to him. And he went to, ran to Eli and said, Here am I, thou callest me. And he said, I called not, lie down again. And he went and lay down. And then he heard the Lord again call and say, Samuel. And of course he runs to Eli again and says, Here am I, if thou didst call me. He answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. And Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. But he had been ministering to him. He called him the third time. And of course, when he went to Eli, that's when Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child and he was hearing the voice of the Lord. If you will minister unto God, God will minister back to you and you will hear the voice of the Lord. We see another scripture over in Habakkuk chapter 2. It's important to hear the voice of the Lord. He says in chapter 2, verse 1, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me. you got to kind of be tuned in towards the Lord. I'm watching. I'm waiting for the Lord to speak to me. You get in the presence of God and you're tuned in. You're listening for what he would say. I'll watch to see what he will say to me and what I shall answer when I'm approved. What he was expecting to be reproved. God wants you to be tuned in to him so that you can be ready to hear what he would say unto you. We see another scripture regarding the importance of worship in, to, in hearing the voice of the Lord. Not just praising. Praising is one thing. Worship is another thing. In Psalms 95, verse 6, he says, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God. We are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Today, if you will hear His voice. Well, why would we hear His voice? Because of the fact that we've been worshiping Him. We've been bowing down and ministering unto Him. And when you worship Him and realize He is worthy of all glory and honor and praise in your worship, then God will take notice and you'll have gotten a position to hear His voice. We see this quoted over also in Hebrews. It speaks of those who were to hear the voice of the Lord in verse 7. 
Hebrews 3, 7, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation of the day of temptation in the wilderness. They heard his voice. Why did they harden their hearts? Because they didn't obey what he told them to do. Your fathers tempted me, proved me, saw my works 40 years. I was grieved with that generation, said they do always err in their heart, and they've not known my ways. Unless we obey the voice of the Lord, are we going to know his ways? No. We actually will be erring in our heart. Instead of responding to obey what he tells us to do, we'll be actually resisting the Holy Spirit. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. God wants us to enter in. He wants us to hear the voice of the Lord and enter into what he has for us. Another thing that we see is over in Acts <coughs> chapter 9. In Acts chapter 9, verse 10. Here's another thing that's important for you to be in a position to hear the voice of the Lord. Acts 9, verse 10. There was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. To him the Lord said in a vision, and we talked about how he can speak to you in various ways, dreams, visions, all kinds of things. He spoke to him in a vision, saying, Ananias, he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. Now why was this guy in a position to hear? Because he was a disciple. Who is a disciple? A disciple is not just a nominal believer. A disciple is one who has been continuing in the word of God. That meant he'd been certainly drawing nigh unto the Lord. We know that from over in John chapter 8 and verse 31 where it says, Then said Jews of the Jews that believed on him, If you continue in my word, that's someone who's walking in the word, continuing, remaining in it, then are you my disciples indeed. The true disciples are continuing the word, not just because you've been born again. Just because you're born again doesn't make you a disciple. It's whether you're continuing in the Word of God. And also, what else shows that you're a disciple? It's the fact that you're bringing forth much fruit in your life. Not just a little bit of fruit. Remember, you become fruitful through the Word. And then you're to go through the cleansing process to bring forth more fruit. And then you come to the place of abiding in Him, walking in His ways. And what's that going to produce? Much fruit. He says in John 15, 8, Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. The real disciples are the ones that continue in his word, and they bear much fruit, because they're obviously walking in it. They're doing the word. They're seeing God accomplish the great work in their life. That is what God wants for you. We also see that if we're going to hear the voice of the Lord, we got to open up the door of our heart and walk in his ways. We see over in Revelation 3.20, this is talking about the Laodicean church that was not seeking after the ways of the Lord. They were all caught up with all the temporal things. They were spiritually blind, spiritually couldn't see at all, couldn't hear. They were walking in all these ways carnally. Revelation 3.20, he says to them, Behold, I stand at the door. What's the door? The door of your heart. And knock. Otherwise, God's not going to force himself to come into you. You've got to invite him in. You've got to open up the door and let him come in. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. You want to have fellowship with the Lord? You want to see God manifest himself? You need to hear his voice. Open up the door, the door of your heart. Let him come in and have his way in your life. He will come in. He will sup with you and you with him. Now this brings us to another point. What would hinder you from hearing the voice of the Lord? Certainly, there will be means whereby if you don't meet the conditions, you won't hear the voice of the Lord. Isaiah 59, verse 2, look what it says. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Well, he's not going to hear you. He's not going to hear you. You're certainly not going to hear him. He's not going to be speaking back. Why were, they se why were they separated from God? Because of their iniquities, their sins. 
Sin and iniquity has to be dealt with in our life. God wants you to confess your sins, repent, change your mind, turn away from them, not allow yourself to continue to walk in any areas of sin. It will hinder you from hearing the voice of the Lord. Another thing that's important is you've got to hear the true teaching of the Lord. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, makes a statement regarding the last days, and that's relevant for us. He says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times, and we certainly are in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, deceiving spirits, and doctrines of devils. You have to make sure that you're not listening to evil spirits, seducing spirits, and you're not following doctrines of devils. The devil has teachings. They're teachings anything that's contrary to the Word of God. It can be some half-truths mixed in with some lies as well. It still becomes a doctrine of the devil. We have lots of doctrines of devils out there in the body of Christ today because we see so many different doctrinal stands on a subject. Well, you know they're all wrong but one at best. So there's a problem. These are doctrines that haven't come from the Holy Spirit. These are doctrines of devils. You're certainly not going to hear the voice of the Lord if you're hearing the wrong doctrines, because he's only going to speak in line with his word. 2 Timothy chapter 4, in the second letter to Timothy, he writes further. He said in 2 Timothy 4, verse 3, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. We see a lot of people today are like that. They won't endure sound doctrine. They got their own way. They're going to do whatever they want. They're going to follow their own thing. But after their own loss, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They want some great new revelation. They have itching ears, and they'll get the, own, the teachers that they want to hear instead of hearing the Word of God the way they should. And they don't have sound doctrine. Notice what it says. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. There's a lot of people that are listening to fables. What are fables? Fables are going to be anything that's contrary to the Word. Any extra biblical works that people listen to, such as anything that's not a part of the canon of Scripture, you don't want to ever listen to it. It's not the truth whatsoever. Turned into fables. These were Jewish fables that they were following after false books that people listen to and quote even and declare that they are supposed truth, it's all lies. They turned away themselves from the truth. Are you going to hear the Lord, hear, hear His voice, if you're not enduring sound doctrine? No. If you turn your errors away from the truth and you're turning to fables, stories, things that are not a part of the canon of Scripture, no. We should have absolutely nothing to do with listening to any of these false fables, teachings. If it's not in line with the Word, don't listen to it. Isaiah, we see something else. Chapter 50. In Isaiah chapter 50, we pick up over in verse 4. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, one who has been taught and learned and discipled, that I should know how to speak in word to him that's weary. He awakened, wakeneth morning by morning. He waketh my ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God has opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Notice, as you get the tongue of the learned, because you have learned the ways of the Lord, and you've learned how to speak right words, you learn how to speak a word in season to him that's weary, and minister to others. What's God going to do? He's going to use you to speak to people. And He'll waken you morning by morning. And as He wakens your ear to hear. That's why you ever wake up in the morning, Scriptures come to you, or God's speaking to you about things. As you're waking up, that's God bringing things to you that He wants. It might be to speak to someone else or bringing some revelation to you in some way. God opens your ears. Of course, he says, I was not rebellious, neither turned back. Otherwise, you're ready to take hold of what he tells you to do and obey it. You're not going to turn back. You're not going to be rebellious. 
You see, if you're one who's tuned into the Lord and ready to hear His voice and ready to obey what He tells you to do, hey, He's going to find a listening ear, someone ready to obey, someone who won't be rebellious or turn back. He'll be speaking to you. That's what He's looking for. He's looking for a people that'll, that'll have learned and they'll learn how to speak right and they'll be having the, the ear ready to hear the Word of God and to go and take it to others and speak it to them because you have learned the way of the Lord. We see another scripture over in 1 Corinthians. Chapter 3. This will be a hindrance to you hearing the voice of the Lord. This is what he speaks to the Corinthian church, and the Corinthian church had lots of problems. He says in chapter 3, verse 1, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. They were carnal, fleshly even as unto babes in Christ. Babes is the word ne napios in the Greek, and it means infant, an infant. Otherwise, someone who's like a spiritual infant that hasn't grown up, a spiritual baby Christian. So, what was the problem? These guys hadn't grown up. God wants you and I to grow up. He wants you to come and grow up, to grow up, to start learning His ways, Come out of carnality, of walking in the flesh, walking after the human nature way, and start listening and li hearing what he has to speak to you. He'll speak to you as spiritual. I said, I fed you with milk and not with meat. I mean, meat's for those who are spiritual, see. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither now, yet now are you able. They hadn't grown up very well. He says, for you are yet carnal. And what was the mark of them being carnal? For that whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men, just like walking like the world's walking? We should not have envying, we should not have strife, we should not have divisions, we should not be carnal, walking after the flesh. No. He wants us to learn to walk in his ways. Then you'll be in a position to be spiritual. What's going to cause us to grow up? Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13 says, Everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Who uses milk? A baby. So a spiritual baby is one who is using milk. Why are they in that stage? It says they're unskillful in the word of righteousness. The word unskillful is a word, aparos, which means inexperienced, you notice. It means inexperienced. That means they haven't been doing the Word. So how are you going to grow up, not just hearing the Word, but doing the Word? The guy is inexperienced in the Word of Righteousness. He's still a baby, a nepios, a spiritual infant. In the measure that you become a doer of the Word that you hear and do it consistently will be the measure that God's going to start bringing spiritual growth in your life. And what do you do? You do the Word of Righteousness. You get experienced in it, you carry it out. When you do it, you will grow up. And by reason of use of hearing and doing and hearing and doing consistently, you will grow up. It says strong meat. That's the guy that's spiritual. Belongs to them that are of full age. They've grown up. How did they get to that place? Even those who by reason of use. The word use is a word which actually means habit by the reason of habit, of use, consistently hearing and doing and hearing the do, doing. They grow up to full age. They even come to the place of their senses exercise to discern both good and evil. In other words, what God is saying is he wants you to come out of all carnality. He wants you to come out of walking in the flesh. He wants you to walk after the way of the Word of God, be a hearer and a doer of it, and grow up in the things of God. As you're doing the word of righteousness by reason of use, hearing and doing and hearing and doing and hearing and doing, that is going to cause you to grow up spiritually. Another thing that we see, it's going to be important to hear the voice of the Lord. Revelation chapter 2. And each one of these chapters, uh, the, the verse chapter 2 and 3, where it's speaking to the seven churches, <coughs> excuse me, he talks about to each one of them, the first thing he says to them is, I know thy works. Your works show forth what you've been doing. And that's how we grow, by hearing and doing the word of God. 
And in each one of those, at the end of the address of to each one of the churches, he says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. You've got to have a hearing ear, a spiritual ear. A spiritual ear is the ones who've been hearing and doing the Word. They're going to be tuned in. They're going to be listening. They're going to be hearkening to His voice. They're going to be doing the Word. When you're in the flow of doing what God wants, you're going to be in the position to hear His voice. Remember, it's for those who are of the truth, those who are continuing in the Word, those who are true disciples, those that have fruit, abiding in the Word, all the different things that we've seen already. So God wants you to hear. Many people don't have an ear to hear. Why? Because they haven't been doing the Word. You hear what the Spirit says to the churches, and of course He's always going to tell you to overcome and conquer. He's going to always lead you to conquer everything in your life. The word overcome is the word nakao, which means to conquer and carry off the victory. God wants you to conquer, and He wants you to carry off the victory. He doesn't want you to win a few and lose a few or get beat up by the devil continually. He wants you to conquer and overcome in every situation, and He will enable you to do it. Another thing that we must understand, to hear the voice of the Lord, you need to be, of course, have dealt with sin and be walking in holiness before the Lord. God is a holy God. And he's going to manifest himself in the midst of holiness. He will speak. Notice what it says in Psalm 60, verse 6. God has spoken in his holiness. He's a holy God. And he's going to speak to those who are holy before the Lord. He tells us to be holy as I am holy. You and I are actually commanded to be holy. And how are we going to be holy? Because of the fruits of righteousness. Fruits of righteousness produce holiness. That's because you've been doing the word of righteousness. And so he's going to speak in his holiness. So those are the people that are holy before him, walking in his ways <clears throat> with the fruits of righteousness, they're going to be ones that are going to hear his voice. Now we've talked about this before, but let's just bring up a remembrance for you about the different ways that God speaks to you. One of the ways he speaks to you is from the word that's in you. This is talking about the Word. Proverbs 6.22, When thou goest, it, the Word, shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. When thou awakest, it, the Word, shall talk with thee. God's going to talk with you through the Word because the Word is what He's going to bring to your remembrance by the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of you. Of course, if you don't have much Word in you, how are you going to be able to hear much? You won't. The more the Word is in you, the more you'll be in a position for, as it says here, when you awaken, it will talk with you and show you what to do. We also mentioned that God will speak with a still, small voice. That means you need to get tuned in to Him. You certainly can't be full of anxiety and turmoil and all upset and fleshly things, reacting negatively, and think that you're going to be in a position to hear. No. Mm -hmm. First Kings 19, verse 11 and 12. This is talking about the prophet Elijah here. and he said he, God said to him, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains, breaking pieces of the rocks before the Lord. And the Lord wasn't in the wind. That's not why, why he's going to come and speak to you. After the wind, an earthquake. The Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire. The Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Aha. Now, it says, it was so, when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering into the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he began to speak to him and show him what he was to do. He heard the voice. It was a still, small voice. You've got to get quiet. You've got to get your eyes off yourself. If you're embroiled in all the things that are going on, how are you going to be tuned in to hear him? He wants you to hear. It's going to be a still, small voice from the inside of you where he's come to dwell. Another way that he speaks to you that we've mentioned is over in <clears throat> Isaiah 
chapter 30 where you might hear a word, but it seems to come out of nowhere. Where did that come from? Isaiah 30, verse 21. Thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand or you turn to the left. Notice, it's like a word behind you. You can't tell where it came from. The things of the Spirit, they just seem to come out of nowhere, in a sense, because it's not a natural thing. It's coming from the Spirit. And so you'll hear like a word will come, and it might seem like it comes from behind you, from some place, but it's God speaking to you from the Spirit. You need to recognize and be ready to hear the things that he tells you. Tuned in to him. He also can speak to you through an inward witness. An inward witness is like a knowing on the inside of you or something on the inside of you that's showing you that this is right or it's not right. It can be a positive thing or a negative thing. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. You can have a witness of things that are of God or the things that are not of God. And he will speak from the conscience as well. As we've talked about this, how he'll speak. Romans 9.1, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not in my conscience, also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit. You will witness of things that are of the Holy Spirit as well. <coughs> Angels can also speak to you. Angels will be speaking to you from the outside. They don't come to dwell in you, remember. Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Here's where the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, go toward the south on the way that goes down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. So the angel spoke and told him what to do. At the same time, the Holy Spirit can be speaking to you from the inside. Verse 29, the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to the chariot. So the angel started things off, and then the Holy Spirit spoke to him and told him specifically what he was supposed to do. You'll see that the God will do these kinds of things. And he also can speak to you through all kinds of ways, visions, dreams. We saw that this is in the beginning of the day of Pentecost, Acts 2.17, it said it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, and that really is talking about the church age, the whole church age, the last two days of the 2,000 years of the church age. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters, daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Old men shall dream dreams. God can speak to you through visions, through dreams. He did it in the New Testament. We've spent some time in the past messages talking about how he speaks to us through dreams and visions to accomplish the things that he purposes. So God can speak to you in lots of different ways. Now another thing, he can speak to you through a prophecy that might have been given to you. Remember, God wants to confirm everything that's been spoken if it's a prophecy, he want, he'll confirm it to you personally so you know it's so. But at the same time, if you've had something that God has spoken to you in some way, or a prophecy that came to you, that doesn't mean it's automatically going to come to pass. It can be what God purposes for you, but who's going to try to hinder it? The enemy. 1 Timothy 1.18 tells you something important. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies that went before on thee, prophecies that went about him, what God purposed to bring forth in his life, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. That means you're going to have to engage in spiritual warfare to see these things come to pass. Just because God has spoken some, or the same thing that we have the more sure word of prophecy, which is the word of God, remember, just because you have a promise and you believe that promise, does that mean that it's automatically going to come to pass? Not necessarily. Second Peter 1.19, we also have a more sure word of prophecy. Where until you do well, you take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. So you've got this prophecy, you've got this or a, a, a scripture promise. What do you need to do? 
you need to be warring a good warfare against the enemy to see things come to pass. He said, look, Timothy, you've got to war a good warfare. Just because you've had some things spoken over you or we have promises that belong to us doesn't mean they're automatically going to come to pass. It's what God purposes, but the devil will try to hinder things. Remember, that's what happened with Paul. Paul had to learn and grow in his authority in conquering the enemy. Look what he says here in 2 Thessalonians 2.18, which is one of the earlier letters that he wrote. This is when he was growing. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. They were getting hindered by the devil. God doesn't want you to be hindered by the enemy. You have authority and dominion, and you are to conquer everything that he would bring against you. You're going to have to war good warfare to see the things of God come to pass because the enemy will try to hinder you every step of the way. Remember, he's given you authority over all the power of the enemy. The Bible declares that. How we see in, uh, also in Colossians 1.13, he's delivered you from the authority. The word power is the word exousia that actually means authority in the Greek. The word dunamis is the word for power. This means authority. You've been delivered from the authority of darkness. And notice, he's translated you into the kingdom. That's the position of ruling and reigning. You're to rule and reign. Well, you're going to have to fight against the enemies and conquer the enemies in order to see the victory come forth. In fact, quite an interesting statement made in Acts 14, verse 22. Look what he says. He was confirming the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith. And notice the last part, that we must, through much tribulation, which is the word pressure, enter into the kingdom of God, which is the rule and the reign of God. Therefore, you're going to go through pressure, much pressure, to enter into ruling and reigning. That's because the devil's going to try to block and hinder you. But you have dominion. You're to conquer that's why it says the guy who conquers and carries off the victory inherits all things. That's what we see in Revelation chapter 2. We saw it in verse 7, and you see it in all those end of those statements made in every one of the churches. And we even also see it at the end of Revelation in chapter 21, verse 7. He that overcometh, and this is the word again, the ka'o, which means to conquer, to carry off the victory. That one is going to inherit all things. Inheritance, remember we have all these promises and we're, we already are heir of all things. We have this inheritance that belongs to us. All the promises are yes and amen, amen. But that doesn't mean they're coming to pass, does it? You've got to conquer the enemy. This is a present tense verb, by the way, a participle in the Greek, which means he was conquering continually and carrying off the victory continually shall inherit all things. You are a conqueror, and you are to be completely victorious and overcome every enemy that's arrayed against you. That's how you're going to come into possessing the things that God has for you. Praise God. So you're going to have to war a good warfare. At the same time, you've got to watch that you're not deceived by anything that the enemy would try to bring against you. That's why watch what you are listening to. Be sure it's always in line with the Word of God because there's all kind of false stuff out there. Jeremiah 14, 14. Then the Lord said to me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. Yeah, there's people that say they're prophets, but if they're speaking things that are contrary to the Word, they're lies. If they're speaking things that are not coming to pass, they're lies. He said, I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake with them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination, a thing of not, and the deceit of their heart. Only things that are in line with the word of God or things that are going to come to pass are true. That would be from the Lord. Jeremiah 23 also <clears throat> speaks. Verse 32, he says, Behold, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams, try to tell you false dreams that they supposedly had, I guess. <laughs> Lies. 
do not do, and saith the Lord, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Again, he says, yet I sent them not nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all. Watch people that don't prophesy their false dreams that don't come to pass or are contrary to the word. They're lying. They're telling. You've got to be watchful of these false prophets. See, they had all kinds of problems with false prophets, and we have problems today with them as well. Proverbs, Jeremiah 23, 21, he says, I've not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I've not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. If they'd stood in my counsel and caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned from their evil way and from the evil they're doing. You're going to know them by their fruits, aren't we? You see somebody that supposedly is speaking things that they're, they declare they're, pro, they're a prophet and it's contrary to the word, or their fruit is contrary to God's way, you know there is a problem. How do we know who's of God, who's of not? Look at the fruit in their life. Matthew 7, verse 15, he said, Beware of false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing to make you think that they're something. But inwardly, they're ravening, ravening wolves, he says, the false ones. And remember, this is prophesied for the last days as well. For it's why it's important for you and me to be sure we're hearing the voice of the Lord and not something that's false. Matthew 24, verse 11, Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Check everything out in line with the word. Be sure it's right. If you've got an inward witness on the inside that this is not right, get away from it. The deception is going forth. Remember, deceiving spirits are the mark of the last days. In fact, we've got people that even bring things forth that are totally, con things that they speak are totally contrary to the truth of the Word of God. Look what it says in 2 Peter 2.1. There were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you that privily shall bring in damnable heresies, heresies that are contrary to the truth. Heres heresies that are in the body of Christ that are being taught, that are not true whatsoever. So it's important to make sure you hear the voice of the Lord. Now, if you hear the voice of the Lord, what are you expected to do? You're expected to obey and to do what He says. I guarantee you, if you're not going to do what God says, you're not going to be hearing his voice much. He's just going to shut it off. Why would he tell you anything if you're not going to do it? Look at the statement that they made in Exodus 19, verse 8. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Whatever God speaks, be ready to do it. Be ready to obey it. That is what he wants for you. Now what happens if you don't? Let's look at some cases where they didn't obey, and what was the result of them not doing what God told them to do? Now, you're going to have some destructive things happen. Look what it says in Numbers 14, verse 22. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt in the wilderness, have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice. They heard his voice, but they didn't hearken to it. They didn't do it. What happens to them? Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. The ones that wouldn't obey and wouldn't hearken, they never got in the land. They died out in the wilderness, they, which is all a type of you and I not seeing the promises. The physical land's type of the spiritual land, which is the promises of God that belong to us that you and I are to go in and possess. Deuteronomy. Chapter 8, verse 20. As the nations which the Lord destroyed before your face, huh, they got destroyed because they weren't doing what God said, so shall you perish. Why? Because you would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. That's important. When God's voice comes to you, through what's the Word or the Holy Spirit or whatever He's speaking to you, be ready to obey it. He comes to bring correction to you, better be to obey it. He brings to give direction to you, counsel to you, whatever it is, we should obey it. Don't just 
well, I heard it, yeah, and I didn't obey it, and then I'm continuing to think I'm going to get anywhere with the Lord. No, he expects you to, oh, to repent, obey, and do what he says. They got destroyed. They would perish because they would not be obedient unto the Lord. Look at what it says about these guys in, that were in the wilderness in Deuteronomy 9, verse 23. Likewise, and the Lord sent you from Kadesh Barnea, saying, Go up and possess the land that I have given you. That's a good thing. That's what they were to do. Then you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. And you believed him not, nor hearkened to his voice. They didn't do it. And they ended up dying out in the wilderness as well because they rebelled. They didn't hearken to his voice. One thing is getting in a position to hear his voice. A second thing is doing what he says so you can see the results of God's blessing. That is what God expects us to do, and that's why we need to be doing the Word. Here's even a case, quite a statement that's made. These were guys that were actually men of war that got trained up in the warfare. Just like we get trained up in spiritual warfare, we understand our authority and weapons of warfare. Look what it says in Joshua 5, 6. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness. 40 is the number of testing to see whether they're going to follow them or not till all the people that were men of war, that meant they got trained up in warfare, which came out of Egypt, the type of us coming out of the ways of the world. Egypt's the type of the world. They got consumed. Well, here, they were men of war. They should have been able to fight and conquer all the enemies. And here they came out of the ways of the world. What happened? They got consumed. Why? Because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Obedience. That's the key. Obedience in all things is what God expects. He wants you to come to the place of being obey, 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 ready to obey everything that he tells you to do. The ones who are obedient are the ones who see victory, that see God move in their life, that see he continually speaks to them and shows them what to do and will lead them step by step. Obedience. God expects us to obey and follow his ways. Look what it says over in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 14. He says, If you will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall both you and also the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord your God. That'd be a positive thing. But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you, as it was against your fathers. Everybody thinks God's automatically for them. Well, if he's for you, nobody can be successfully against you. But if you're not for him, because you're rebelling against him, the hand of the Lord will actually be against you. People say, well, that's Old Testament. That can't be in the New Testament. Oh, yeah? Look what it says over in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And who are the righteous? The ones that are born again and doing the word of righteousness. They're walking in righteousness. His ears are open unto their prayers. Ah, he's hearing their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Could you be born again and doing evil? Walking in sin? Yeah. Is the face of the Lord for you? No, it's against you if we're doing evil. That's why we got to walk in line with the ways of the Word of God. And then we'll be blessed, if not. See, God, God wants you to hear His voice, get in a position to hear His voice, but then be ready to obey. You know, some people hear His voice, but then they don't obey, and, and then they wonder why the, they aren't hearing the voice of the Lord anymore. They got shut off because they quit obeying. Why would He talk to them again if they don't obey? Psalms 106, verse 25, speaks of what they did. They murmured in their tents, hearken not unto the voice of the Lord. Therefore he lifted up his hand against them to overthrow them in the wilderness, overthrow their seed also among the nations, scatter them in their lands. Isn't that what happened to the Israelites, scattered all over the world? Because they didn't obey the Lord. How about a nation? that will not follow the way of the Lord. This is why we pray for this nation continually to see them follow after 
the way this nation was set up as one nation under God. Jeremiah 7, 28. Thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. We can't have that. That's why we need to continually pray and to witness and to see people come to the Lord and war against the evil spirits operating through these ungodly people, ungodly leaders, and get rid of them out of office and get godly ones. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. When the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. We've got to have righteous ones in our government. What happened to them? Truth perished, got cut off from their mouth. That's why walking in the truth is absolutely of utmost importance. Jeremiah 11, verse 6. The Lord said to me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant and do them. Again, that's obedience, isn't it? Obeying what he says. For I earnestly protested unto your fathers in the day that I brought them up out of the land of Egypt, even unto this day, rising early and protesting, saying, Obey my voice. He kept trying to get them to obey. God's trying to do the same thing with us. Do what I say. Obey my voice. Yet they obeyed not, nor inclined their ear. What do they do? Every walked every one in the imagination, their evil heart. Therefore, I'll bring upon them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they did them not. Otherwise, all these curses came upon them because they didn't follow the Lord. Receiving correction and getting right is important. Remember Nebuchadnezzar? God had spoke to him. <laughs> but you know what? He didn't listen. And he didn't obey. Daniel 4.31, while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, Oh, ne King Nebuchadnezzar, that's when he was saying that I, uh, by my power these things were accomplished. To thee it is spoken that kingdom has departed from thee. And it did. And he was ended up out there like a wild animal out there, you know, among, uh, out there in the, the grass, just in terrible shape because he didn't obey. Then we see another scripture over in Hebrews chapter 12, and this is certainly relevant for all of us. Hebrews 12, 25, look what it says. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. We want to obey, not refuse him. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. We need to be ready to obey what he tells us to do and not be resistant whatsoever. He goes on and says, Whose voice then shook the earth, but now as he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. In fact, everything's going to be shaken. This word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of the things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Everything's going to be shaken. Wherefore, we receive in a kingdom that cannot be removed, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably and reverence with godly fear. We walk in the fear of the Lord. We walk with reverence before God and obedience. We're going to operate in the kingdom, the rule and the reign of God. It won't be moved, and we're going to conquer all the enemies. Why? Because we're going to hear his voice in the midst of this tremendous shaking that's going to come. We've seen nothing yet compared to the shaking that is going to come in these last days. Now, what happens, of course, if you obey? If you obey the voice of the Lord, you're going to see tremendous things happen in your life. Does God want to do great things for us? Of course he does. Genesis 22. Remember the statement was made to Abraham because of his obedience. He said in Genesis 22, 18, In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. It brought blessings upon the entire earth. What's going to happen for you if you'll obey what he says to do? In other words, we've got to follow his way. We can't approach God after the way we want him to do things. No, we find out what he wants us to do and we do what he says. His way is the way to victory. Exodus 15, 26. 
He said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, will give ear to his commandments, keep all his statutes, you're hearing and you're obeying, you're doing. I'll put none of these diseases upon thee that I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Otherwise, God will heal you and deliver you and restore you and set you free from bondages in your life. We see the prophecy that he gave to the Israelites in, in uh, Exodus 19, 5 and 6. He said, Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant. You see, obedience to God's word and obedience to what the Holy Spirit speaks to you in line with the word is keeping covenant with him. We're carrying out the covenant. You shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, ruling and reigning, a holy nation, because God will do this work and bring you to the place of holiness. These are the words that you speak unto the children of Israel. And of course, now, when does this come to pass? In the New Testament area, because we now are kings and priests, and we are to become a holy nation before the Lord as we walk in the ways of holiness before him. What else will God do? You know, the angels are sent forth to minister for us the heirs of salvation. And they will perform, they will perform the word. In fact, angels will fight in the realm of the spirit against the evil spirits and conquer them. Notice what he says in Exodus 23, 20. Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. It means he's going to guard you, this means and to bring you to the place that I prepared, because they'll go before you and bring you into what God has for you. So they're carrying out the word. Beware of and obey his voice. What they would only speak would be in line with the word, or what's in, we, what the Holy Spirit might speak to us. The same, we obey the voice of the Lord. Provoke him not. He's not going to pardon your transgressions, your sin and rebellion. I mean, he's not going to you know, let them go, no. My name is in him. If thou wilt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, again, you hear the voice, now you obey. Then will I be an enemy unto thine enemies, and an adversary unto thy adversaries. God will fight against your enemies. He'll be an adversary against them, if we'll do. At the same time, he's going to bring you up against your enemies, and you're going to see them be destroyed. Notice, my enemy, my, excuse me, my angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto all these ites. All these ites, physical enemies, are a type of the spiritual enemies, which are the evil spirits. And you and I are going to come in against all the evil spirits that are in us in all areas of our life. And we're going to cast them out and drive them all out. That's the type. He says, I'll cut them off. Now you have to understand, this is not just some quick one-time battle and that's it, as a lot of people would like to have it. Not so. When they went to possess the physical promised land, was it just one battle and that was it? No. It was a little by little process of driving out the enemies, wasn't it? The physical that you see is the physical type and shadow of the spiritual reality. Notice what it says in Exodus 23, 30. By little and little I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased. This means to bear fruit. It's the word para and inherit the land which is possessing the promises. So as you're casting out the demons in area after area of your life, which is all what this is a type pointing towards for us spiritually, it'll be a little by little process. And then as you're walking in line with the word, you'll be bringing forth fruit. So you keep casting them out till you bring forth the fruit, having the, possessed the, victor, the victory over those enemies, and you'll inherit the land, the promises of God. Your inherited rights in Christ will come to pass for you. That is what he wants. We see another statement about the latter days in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 30. When you're in tribulation, yeah, when the pressures come, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice, that's the key. Turning would be repenting from sins, turning towards him, turning back, but also obedient. Obedience. It's not just I confess my sins, I repent, and then I do nothing. No. 
We need to correct all the problems, don't we? And be obedient to him. Do what he says. For the Lord thy God's a merciful God. He sure is. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. Otherwise, God will be there to deliver you, to restore you, to bring you out of it, and to protect you. He will not forsake you. In fact, if you and I will learn to obey, look what it says in Deuteronomy 28.1. It shall come to pass if you will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments that I command thee this day. The Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. God will exalt you and raise you up. That's what he wants for every one of us. And notice what else. All these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. What's going to be the condition, though? If thou shalt hearken, that's obedience unto the voice of the Lord thy God. God wants you and I blessed. He, wants, he's not, he doesn't want to hold anything back. He withholds no good thing from those who are walking uprightly. He wants the blessings to come on you in your life to bring forth freedom and liberty. In fact, obedience brings God on the scene to manifest himself as God unto you. Look what it says in Jeremiah 7, verse 23. This thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Walk in all the ways that I've commanded you. It may be well with you. That's what God wants. He wants it to be well with us. Good, pleasing, blessed. Everything will be good. This means, what's, what's going to be the key? It's obedience. In Jeremiah, he said it again to them in chapter 11, verse 4. He said, which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace where they were in bondage, saying, Obey my voice and do them according to all that I command you. So shall you be my people, and I will be your God. Hey, when God is God to you, you're going to be blessed. Everything is going to go what God wants. He's going to be bringing forth great things happening in your life. One of the things you need to realize Whatever God's spoken to you, if you'll obey it, he'll bring it to pass. Look at the scripture promise we see in Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said it, and shall he not do it? If God said he would do it, he'll do it. Hath he spoken, shall he not make it good? No, watch. God watches over his word to perform it. He'll perform it for you in your life. He's just looking for us to obey and do what he says. You will engage in warfare. You will go through the pressure. You will have to resist all the enemies. You've got to walk uprightly before them. Stay away from all the sin and all the iniquity, all the things that we've seen. Put them first place in your life. Be a consistent doer of the word. Engage in the warfare. You will go through the pressure, but you'll come out victorious, entering into the rule and the reign of God. Joshua 21, verse 45. There failed not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. Hey, he's no different today. Everything he said, all the promises, everything that he's given you, it can all come to pass. Why does it come to pass for some and not for others? It's because the some are obeying and the others are not obeying. Obedience is the key of what we do. And remember, you're going to engage in warfare. And that's so important. We really see this brought forth of what God expects of us because it talks about blowing the trumpet in Zion that's waking us up, warning of what's coming. Verse 11, the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. You and I are in the army of the Lord. We're soldiers in Jesus Christ, and we're to engage in the warfare and the fight. Warn the war, we're good warfare, we're fighting the good fight. He shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. Those that obey are doing what? They're obeying his word. And the word executeth actually means doing. It's the word asaw, which means do in the Hebrew. He who is doing 
as it says in Young's brings it out, for mighty is the doer of his word. You're only as mighty as the level of you doing the word. If you don't do the word much, you're not going to be mighty. You'll be weak because you de the devil will take it out. He is strong or mighty that is doing his word. That's what causes you to be a mighty soldier and arm, an army in the army of the Lord. That is what he wants to bring forth for you. And what's going to happen? As you walk in the ways of the Lord, you're going to come to the place of being mighty and getting delivered and getting set free and possessing everything that God has for you. Obadiah 1.17 says, Upon Mount Zion, and Zion is a picture of the conquering church. They come up to the mount, they've conquered all their enemies. Upon Mount Zion, the place of conquering, shall be deliverance. Because you're going to engage in deliverance in order to get set free, casting out these demons. And there shall be holiness. What's going to be the result of deliverance in your life? You'll come to the place of being holy. And then when you come to the place of being holy, what's going to happen? The house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. That's you possessing the promises, your inheritance in Christ. You will see it come to pass. That's Mount Zion. That's the one who comes to the place of being a conqueror. Well, we go back over to Joel. And what does it say is going to happen out of Mount Zion? Verse 16 in Joel 3. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion. He's going to roar. It's the roar of a lion coming to conquer. That's what this is referring to, of a lion, a conqueror. And utter his voice from Jerusalem, the heavens of the earth shall shake, that the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. That's when he's going to bring the judgments on the earth at the same time. He's our hope, he's our strength, and we will walk in victory in the midst of what's going to happen to the world. Because of their disobedience. And of course, what's he going to do? <laughs> He's going to bring judgments upon all these ones. Isaiah 66 even reveals all this. In verse 6, he says this, A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord. <clears throat> what's he doing? He will render recompense to his enemies. <coughs> The Lord will give recompense. This is payback time to the enemies. The enemies will be smitten. And who are all your enemies? It's all the evil spirits that have been working against you. God wants to destroy all of the enemy's works in your life. If you'll put them first place, great things will happen. One more passage of scripture before we close for tonight. And this is, we've talked about it in the past, but Hagehi is a picture of the end time mighty church being raised up, seeing the great glory of God poured upon it as it is becoming, walking in the ways of the Lord and being the remnant that, that are going to obey him and serve him. Hagehi, verse, chapter 1, verse 12, speaks of the remnant. The remnant are the ones who are the few who are listening to him and obeying him. The remnant of the people, what do they do? They obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. Everybody's supposed to do it, but unfortunately only a remnant's going to do it. As the Lord had sent them, the people did fear before the Lord. They're going to have the fear of the Lord before them, which means they're not going to walk in sin any longer. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, and by the fear of the Lord you depart from iniquity. And this is the one, he says to them, I am with you. The ones who are obedient, that have the fear of the Lord, that's the one that God will be with. He's going to manifest himself to them. And he's going to stir up this remnant of the people. And they're going to come, and they are going to work in the house of the Lord. Well, you and I are the temple of God today, and we're going to do spiritual work in us, the spiritual temple of the Lord, to build the spiritual house in you. So you become strong and mighty and fruitful and conquer and overcome and see God manifest himself in your life. He wants you to become strong and mighty. And that's what he's going to accomplish for everybody that will listen to him and obey. We come to chapter 2 in the seventh month. This is prophetic of the end-time church. 
because this is the month when the second coming of Jesus occurs with the fulfillment of the three feasts of the Lord, the Feast of Trumpets, the catching up to meet the church and the Lord, the Day of Atonement, which is the judgment upon the nations, and the Feast of Tabernacles, which is the millennial reign of Jesus. It all happens in the seventh month. So he's talking about all the work at the end time church and what's going to happen. For all these ones, he comes to them and he says in verse 3, Who's left among you that saw this house? That's the first house in our first glory. How do you see it now? That's talking about the church. The early church had the glory of God poured out. Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? That's right. Look at the church. It's not and have the glory of God, the manifest presence of God, like it should. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Zodiac, the, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land. God wants you to get strong. Who's going to make you strong? The Lord. How? Through the word that's in you, that you hear and you do. He wants you to become strong and mighty. And do, not work. It's the word saw again, be a doer. Get strong and be a doer of the word consistently. Again, that's the one he says, I'm with you. He's with the ones that are going to get strong spiritually and be doers of the word of God. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so shall my spirit remain among you. Fear not. You can't be afraid of the enemy. You can't be afraid of anything that's going on in the earth. No fear. He says consistently, fear not. We should have no fear. Fear it is not of God, it comes from the devil. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it's a little while, and I'll shake the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry land. A great shaking is going to come. It will. He says, I'm going to shake all nations. The desire of all nations shall come, which is Jesus coming to every nation. And notice what else he says. This house, which is the church, I will fill this house with glory. That's the end time church. The glory is the manifest presence of God. That's what he's going to do. The silver's mine, the gold's mine, he'll provide. He'll provide for the end time church that's walking in his ways. And the glory of the latter house, which is the end time church, shall be greater than of the former. It's going to be greater than the book of Acts church. The book of Acts church, the early church, it was powerful. The end time church will be greater glory manifested, saith the Lord of hosts. In this place I will have peace. Peace. This refers to the total work of God being done in the end time church that sees the glory of God poured out. Because the word peace is the word shalom. And that just doesn't mean peace of mind. It means completeness. The complete work has been done. It refers to a soundness. It refers to you coming to health and prosperity and, and quiet and peace and uh, peace from war, having conquered all your enemies in your life. This, uh, this word is all-encompassing word of the total work of God accomplished in us. And that is what he's going to do. Great days are ahead for the church. The world is going to be covered with darkness and its evil men are going to wax worse and worse. And they are getting worse. Just All you've got to do is see what's going on in the world. But the church is going to rise up and is going to become strong, become mighty, going to be full of the glory of God. And what's going to be the key? Because they're going to hear his voice and they're going to obey. Is it going to happen just because you're born again? No. It's going to happen for the remnant, the few, who are obedient to him. So, as we conclude tonight, what have we seen? God is speaking to us by Jesus Christ, the Word, and by the Holy Spirit. What is the keys for you is to be a sheep, walking close to him, be of the truth, hearing the Word, be ministering unto him, be attentive and watchful to hear his voice, be a worshiper of God. Be a true disciple of the Lord. Open up the door of your heart and let him come in. Get rid of all the sins and iniquities so that would hinder you. Make sure you're not listening to fables and false teachings out there. You only want to hear the word. 
Do not be rebellious or turn back, but be one who's learned and learning to speak right. God will speak things to you and use you. Come out of all carnality and grow up by doing the word. We can't be carnal, spiritual babies. Get experienced in the word of righteousness. Come to the place of doing his works so you have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is speaking and you conquer everything. Be holy because God speaks in his holiness. Know he'll speak, the word will speak to you. He'll speak to you with a still small voice or a word that seems to come out of nowhere. An inward witness. He can speak by an angel to you or by the Holy Spirit or through a vision or through a dream as we have seen. At the same time, you're going to war good warfare to see all these promises come to pass. The devil will not sit down and just watch you possess all the promises. The conquerors, you're going to have to conquer everything. Be sure you don't get around anything that's false. The false prophets and teachers are out there, unfortunately. What do you do? You be ready to obey the Word of God. As you obey the things He's spoken, then what's going to happen? You're going to be blessed. If you don't obey, they didn't see the land. They got destroyed. They died out in the wilderness. Even the men of war got consumed. The, one, the hand of the Lord was even against them. They got overthrown in the wilderness. And they saw just nothing but destruction come. The kingdom even departed from Nebuchadnezzar because he didn't do what God told him to do. And remember, that we won't escape if we don't turn from him, turn, turn to him and listen to him and obey the things that he is speaking us. If you do obey, you'll be blessed. You'll be healed. You'll become a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. The angels will be enemies against your enemies and fight on your behalf. God will never forsake you. He will be there to manifest himself. Blessings will come upon you. He'll be your God. Everything he's spoken, he'll make good in all that he speaks. If you hear and obey, he will bring it to pass. And you'll be a part of the remnant that are hearing his voice, that will build the spiritual house, that will be obedient, that will have the fear of God on before them, that are going to see the great glory of God poured out on the end time church. Be a part of the army of the Lord. Be those who are, are going to come up to Zion and see the Lord roaring out of Zion uh, through you and ministering to others. And God will be there. You'll see his recompense against those who are his enemies in your life. God will do great things. And he's going to bring you and I to the place of becoming strong, mighty, full of glory, full of power, blessed, seeing all the promises come to pass. But it's going to be for those who meet the conditions. It's not going to be for everybody. It's available for everybody. But those who hear and obey the voice of the Lord, God will perform it in your life and we will see the tremendous promises of God come to pass. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the word of God that brings revelation of what the Lord will do as I hear his voice and obey it. I will meet the conditions to hear the voice of the Lord. I will recognize his voice and be obedient to it. And as I am obedient to it, I will see God bring forth in my life all the promises. I will possess the inheritance. I will walk in victory. I will conquer every enemy. And I will see that I'll be a part of the end time church, the glorious church. I'll be strong and mighty, possessing my full inheritance. I will come to completeness and perfection in the Lord and walk in the ways of the Lord and see his blessings come upon me in every area of my life. I thank you, Lord. I will do what your word says so that I will hear your voice and I will be obedient to it. And I will see you bring forth everything that you purpose in my life because I'm a hearer and a doer of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Father, I thank you that each one has ears to hear what has been said tonight and the importance of it for their life. And they will hearken diligently to it 
and see you accomplish everything. We praise you for all that you're going to accomplish in every one of our lives because we're hearers and doers of this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I trust this has encouraged you and kind of give you direction on what